Welcome to Revy's virtual interview with me, Julia Smith, at Karma, Stanford University, on physical modeling and Faust and the creation of GeoShred, the uh, iOS app. And so Revy is, um, has given me some questions, and I will try to answer them um, in this recording. So, first question is, how was GeoShred born? Okay, well, GeoShred was the collaboration between Wisdom Music, which is Jordan Rudis' company, and Laforte com, which is uh, basically three guys. Um, I'm the founding consultant of Moforte, um, Pat Scandalis and Nick Procaro are the main guys who are working all the time on this stuff. And so um, we put a physical model guitar you know, under the uh, playing surface that was driven uh, primarily by Jordan Rudis, who really has strong feelings about how things ought to be played. And uh, so it's a guitar control uh, on an iPad screen. Uh, here it is right here. You can see you know, the six strings, and um, so you have frets horizontally, and you have strings up and down. And so uh, you're really playing strings there. They're uh, physically model strings, and so uh, there's nothing you can't do in principle. If you can't do it, it's because uh, we just haven't gotten around to enabling that. And so a lot of what I do nowadays is try to make demos and see what can I not do, and um, how am I going to put that in, you know, um, you know some kind of uh, extended technique or you know pinch harmonic kind of a thing, but most of the techniques are in there, and you can um, you can really play guitar on this thing. So that was uh, how it was born, and uh, it's uh, been in the App Store since uh, the the winter break. And uh, next question: GeoShred is a product of a collaboration between scientists and a musician, Jordan Rudis. How do you feel about that, and about the strong relations between acad uh, the academy? and the music industry. Well, uh, Stanford has always uh, collaborated quite a bit with industry. Um, you know, it's in the heart of Silicon Valley. It, it actually helped create Silicon Valley. Uh, there's a long history there. A lot of major companies have spun out of Stanford. You know, Hewlett Packard, uh, Yahoo, Google. Uh, it, the list is very long. <clears throat> and so I'm in the music department in the Computer Music Center there, CCRMA. And uh, we, in, we, in fact, were created by um, the FM synthesis algorithm uh, invented by our founder, John Chowning, who uh, uh, you know, invented the algorithm, recognized its potential, and um, you know, long story short, um, it created our center as we know it. So this is just one more spinoff, I guess you would say. Um, there's been decades of research that are actually represented in the uh, physical model. Um, and the research continues. Uh, I have PhD students uh, working in this area, and uh, you know they're working on the on the next thing. And I would say that uh, the work going on right now will have impact on the effects chain at some point uh, in the near future. Um, probably, you know, as soon as they graduate and are available to <laughs> work on it. Uh, but they have to graduate first. Uh, so that's 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 still thriving, and um, you know it's nice for. Uh, Research to have an outlet in the in the real world that people can get their hands on and uh, they make music with, and, and there are many other applications as well. Uh, let's see what else we should talk about. What kinds of uses of GeoShred did you have in mind when you developed GeoShred? Have you heard or seen any unexpected uses of GeoShred? Well, I was thinking about getting the guitar out there. Um, I'm thinking in terms of performance and uh, recording studio. Usage. Now, I'm a guitar player, and uh, Jewish Red is a really nice studio tool for laying down very, very clean, very nicely, smoothly executed uh, guitar riffs and solos with all the effects just the way you want them. Everything stored in a preset, nothing humming, no dirty pots like on the wah pedal uh, giving you scratches in the, in the recording. Um, it's a huge upgrade actually from my actual guitar and its effects chains. Um, and of course, I'm not finished getting absolutely everything there. You know, I, I've got guitars that aren't captured, and, and I have uh, effects that aren't, aren't done. But uh, but for the basic uh, techniques, um, you can you can play a new guitar and, uh, and through very very clean effects. So that that's the way I think about it. But of course, you know, everybody has their own uh, point of view and take. Uh, you should you know talk to Pat, talk to Nick, talk to Jordan. Um, Jordan is actually uh, using it on tour right now with Dream Theater. He's got it on his most recent album, The Astonishing, and it's on their uh, it's on their tour. 
So um, unexpected uses. Yes, uh, you hear some really amazing things. You know, people putting up YouTube recordings of, of what they're doing and, and some definite surprises, uh, just really great performances and amazing sounds, amazing patches. Uh, there are capabilities that, that go way beyond anything I thought about. Uh, the curves, if you look into the curves, you can change any parameter on any note. You can change it as a function of level. Um, there's three types of curves, and, uh, and it's very general. Um, I, I thought of the curves as just being for voicing, you know, that as you go up and down the, the, uh, the pitch, you, you might want to bring in a little more brightness, or you might want to tone down some feedback or something. Uh, as a voicing tool, up and down the... Uh, you know, range of MIDI note number, you might say, um, up and down the keyboard. You think, think of a synthesizer, you have to voice as a function of key number uh, your synthesizer patches. So I, I was only really expecting to do that, and that's mostly what I do. But you can go much farther than that, and there have been some amazing sounds that, you know, I can't believe it's a physically modeled guitar under the hood when I listen to the sound. You just, I would never guess that that's what it was. So lots of surprises along those lines. Um, so what else? Let's see. What can you tell us about your favorite GeoShred features? Uh, well, so for me, it's, it's all about guitar playing and effects, and so the main thing is just having a physically modeled string, a real string in there that I can interact with. I can hit it, I can, I can squelch it, and uh, I can play it uh, like I play guitar. You know, I, I just try to develop, I just try to speak guitar in my usual way. And there's a language. Guitar players all know this. You know. You, you have a language. You, you speak guitar, and uh, you need a you need a synth that allows you to speak it. And so, um, Joe Shred gives you that because it's a guitar. Um, so, but yeah, there are all these other things. The curves are amazing. Um, I love that it's everything's in your preset that you can tune up. Oh, and an amazing thing was the re when I realized that I can voice individual notes in a particular uh, solo of a particular piece. So you know you have presets and you can march through them. In a, in a performance, and so you can voice the individual notes. So one of the things that I did was um, I laid down this uh, um, uh, demo of uh, GeoShred playing uh, Under the Moon by Camel, and, and I just didn't like the, the first D because it just sounded a little weak. And so I actually went in and, and increased the feedback on just that note using the curve facility. And, um, and it made it blossom. So I now have got the perfect blossoming tone. And uh, just for that note, didn't mess up any other notes. And so there's a level of sculpture that you can do that that's, you know, just did not exist. And so it's, that's what makes it such a valuable studio tool because you can hone in on, on exactly what you want. Maybe I should play that. Um, Under the Moon by Camel on GeoShred. All right, so that is an example of being able to voice individual notes. It was that uh, that D in the first phrase that was uh, individually uh, voiced into the right blossom. Uh, it was just a little bit 
unexciting um, when I first played it. So um, that is a very, very powerful feature, uh, the ability to adjust all of the effects on a node-by-node -node basis. Every parameter of everything can be individually sculpted um, as a function of where you are in key number, um, as a function of you know, the input level, you can do a mapping, and you can also do a step as you go through. Um, it will keep picking um, the next value in, in, in the curve. So, um, and, and most of that I didn't even imagine coming. Uh, it was all surprised to me, except for the uh, voicing as a function of key number, you know, note number. Okay, let's see. What were the main challenges in developing GeoThread? Well, you'll get different answers from everyone. Uh, for me, it was mostly the iPad 2. The iPad 2 is, you know, if you look at the power curve, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's back there. It's, it's really, really slow compared to, let's say, the iPad Pro, or even the iPad 3. It's, it's a very slow thing. And we wanted to support it. And we still support it. Everything runs on everything. So, um, you know, you don't get as many effects in, uh, on the iPad 2, but you, know, you can get all six strings and, and, and most all the main effects. So um, that was truly painful. And I do look forward to when we don't support the iPad 2. And I also, um, you know, we, we will start forking, but, you know, you want all of the presets and, and, you know, to work on everything. So, you know, we really do want to resist that, but um, I'm looking forward to more power. And, um, and so there are, there are preset features that you can enable that, that, will, that will require more power, and, um, and, I'm, and I'm pushing on that. So next, um, what are the most interesting recent uses of physical modeling? Um, I guess, uh, well, GeoShred. We have a brand new iOS app using physical modeling. I don't think it's very common even in uh, plugins. Um, I know that Logic has one called Sculpture. Uh, that, that's used. Uh, there's some physical modeling here and there, um, but um, on iOS I haven't seen anything really. So that's happening. Also in research, it's still ongoing. Um, the hottest topic nowadays is wave digital filters. I just did a keynote talk at the Digital Audio Effects Conference, DAFX, DAFX uh, just a few months ago, and it was um, um, about wave digital filters. So we talked about you know progress in wave digital audio effects for the Digital Audio Effects Conference. And so check that out if you're interested. It's a pretty uh, esoteric topic. It's, uh, it's all about circuit modeling. It's all about taking uh, schematics from vintage gear and turning them into real-time performable plugins that are uh, exactly responsive um, in the, as the original in the sense that every knob has the same um, meaning and the same response. So you, you get a, a very fine digitization of all your vintage gear. And so there have been recent breakthroughs in doing that. Um, for example, until recently, you couldn't handle um, other than parallel series connections of elements. Um, you could only handle one nonlinearity. And in fact, nonlinearities were late to come into wave digital filters. So now you can have any number of nonlinearities. You can have any topology. Um, and, there's, and, and so now the action is figuring out how do you solve this stuff in real time because the nonlinearities require either very large multi-dimensional lookup tables for multiple nonlinearities or you need to do things like Newton solvers in real time. And uh, the good news is they tend to converge in just a few steps. So, um, so the, the, the results are good. So you know the problems are being knocked down one by one. Uh, every year there's more papers and so it's an exciting area. Um, in, in just digitizing schematics in a, in a very effective way. So let's see. Um, why did you choose Faust to develop GeoShred? Well, Faust is uh, well. First of all, that stands for Functional Audio Stream. Functional Audio Stream. And I understand that Romain Michon will be giving a talk about that in Introduction to Faust. So um, Faust is a great language for signal processing. It's it's by far my favorite language for signal processing. Before that, you know, I would be doing things primarily in C++. Uh, like in the Synthesis Toolkit, which we use quite a bit. It's a repository of C++ cl classes that was initiated by Perry Cook, and it's maintained primarily now by Gary Scavone at McGill. And so um, that's the C++ library, but now there's, there's Faust, and uh, a lot of it has been ported by Romain himself. So he uh, added a lot of uh, Faust cl um, SDK classes to Faust, and it's, it's just a great language for signal processing, and it compiles into C++. So you've got um, 
basically a high-level language that, that, that compiles to C++, and it's you know, much more compact, much uh, uh, faster to write and faster to debug. For me, anyway, I can get something going in Faust uh, in order of magnitude faster and more reliably than I can in C++. Um, so, so it's just a, a very, very nice language. Um, and, and it works seamlessly with C++. Since it compiles into it, you, you know, can uh, compile Faust uh, into C++ classes that you just mix and match with your other stuff. Um, Faust has a facility called Foreign Functions, which can be C++ uh, underneath. And you can use Faust to generate classes used by that. So you can go Faust, C++, Faust, C++. Um, you can alternate back and forth. And um, in GeoShred, all this runs in the audio callback, which is C++, in a, uh, an Objective-C environment. So um, it's the usual Mac OS world. So I do love Faust. Let's see, what can you tell us about GeoShred feature developments? Well, so as I said, um, I just want to get every feature I ever use. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I just try to lay down tracks, and if I run into a barrier, I go find a way to put it in. One of the nice things about physical modeling is that you're never stuck. You can always go to the next level. As long as you're you know, concerned about reality, if you're, if you're just trying to get something to happen that happened that you do on a guitar, you can do it. There's no barrier. Um, all the techniques, all the anything you do with a string uh, can happen because you've got a model. You're upwards compatible with any extension that's real. And then, of course, there's all the stuff you can do that's not real. And there are many ways to go into uh, uh, generalizations. Um, one of the things I'm interested in trying is uh, vibrations in higher dimensions. Um, because, you know, it sounds better uh, the more dimensions you have. I mean, if you think about a piano string, you know, the, uh, some of the keys have three strings. And each of those strings is vibrating uh, with, a, with an X and Y uh, plane of polarization. You know, it's whirling. And so that's, that's, you know, really three times two. It's actually six dimensions of vibration for one pitch, for one note. And, of course, it's mostly about the amplitude envelope. But it's also about a kind of built-in chorus effect and... It, it uh, gives you a lot of control over the internal trajectory of, of the tone, which is uh, very important. Let's see. How do you see the future of musical apps and touch screen instruments? How is 3D touch going to affect human interaction with music apps? Well, we're really looking forward to 3D touch. You know, it's on the watch. It's on the, uh, um, the, 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 the phone uh, now, finally. But it's not on the iPad yet. Uh, so what we're doing in, in Romain Michon has uh, prototyped the first one of these at Karma is doing things like uh, external FSR pads that you can uh, you know use as a force input because it's really valuable. It's a very nice controller to add, and without it, you know I tend to use uh, the key Y. So you can basically uh, map any parameter to the vertical dimension along a key. Let's say this is a key, then I can I can go up and down and get the effect of, of force. But I'd rather, you know, have that extra parameter. 3D Touch will give you a, a, a real force parameter. And it'll be just another controller, and you'll be able to map it to anything you want. Um, a typical mapping would be uh, plucking velocity or, um, um, or auto Y, that, that kind of thing. So it's another dimension, and we like these dimensions. The, uh, each, each touch is, is two-dimensional, right, already. And you can have, I, I've been told you can have up to 11 points of multi-touch. And so each one of those uh, controls two dimensions. That's, that's uh, 22 dimensions. Well, let's add touch and get it up to 33, right? That's, uh, that's a lot of dimensions of control. I think it's more than anybody can meaningfully uh, really uh, handle um, in a conscious way. But, you know, musicians can learn a lot of multi-dimensional control subconsciously. Through uh, years of practice, we get better. And uh, things... Uh, expressivity is enhanced by more dimensions, and we just train on them. We grow into them, and so I, I think it's going to be great. Well, I see that's my uh, list of questions, so um, um, if you have any more questions, uh, send them uh, by email, and uh, we'll continue that way, or uh, maybe there'll be a question-answer discussion after all the talks, and um, uh, maybe we can talk that way. So. Signing out for now.